In this video, we're going to talk more about this concept of public disclosures and what specifically constitutes prior art. As we've discussed in the past, an important threshold in order for a particular invention to be patentable is that it must be new and non-obvious. And we've talked about how the newness and the non-obviousness of your invention is going to be judged against this concept of prior art. Generally speaking, that includes any public information that exists in your field prior to the date you file for a patent application. But of course, the law is a little bit more nuanced than that. We're going to look at three specific definitions of prior art. One is United States patent law prior to March 16, 2013. This would be the law for any patent applications filed before March 16, 2013. The other would be the new law under the American Invents Act. This would be the law and the definition of prior art that covers patent applications filed after March 16, 2013. And the other we'll look at is the law in Europe. Because as we've discussed, patent laws in different countries will differ from the United States. And people often care about the ability to get patents in jurisdictions that are important to their business, such as Europe. So let's first look at what we'll call the Old Patent Act. This is the United States patent law that covers patent applications filed prior to March 16, 2013. In Section 102 of the Patent Act, it listed various categories of information that would count as prior art. That included any information that was created before the applicant's date of invention that made the invention known or used by others in this country or made the invention patented or described in a printed publication in this or a foreign country, or that described the invention in a filed patent application that eventually published, or that caused the technology to be invented by another who did not ever suppress, abandon, or conceal it. Now there's another category of prior art under the Old Patent Act that covered information that was created more than one year prior to the applicant's filing date. This included information that was patented or described in a printed publication in this or a foreign country, or that caused the information to be placed in public use or on sale in this country. So if you put these two categories of information together, that means the categories of information that came into existence before the applicant's date of invention, and the other group of information that was created more than one year before the applicant's filing date, you can see how the grace period worked. That is, that as long as you were the first to invent your technology, you would have a full year after the public disclosure by yourself or any third party of your technology. Now let's look at the law under the American Invents Act, the new patent law that came into effect and covers applications filed after March 16, 2013. This makes things a little simpler. It simply says that prior art includes information created before the inventor's filing date that causes the information to be patented, described in a printed publication, or in public use, on sale, or otherwise available to the public anywhere. So basically, as long as your technology is publicly available anywhere in the world before your filing date, you will not be able to get a patent. Now in the new law, there is the one limited one year grace period that gives an inventor one year from the date of their own public disclosure or the public disclosure of someone else who derived their information from yours to file a patent. Lastly, let's look at the law in Europe. And this is the law under the European Patent Convention. It says that prior art includes information that exists before the inventor's filing date and includes everything made available to the public by means of a written or oral disclosure by use or in any other way. So this broadly includes any type of public information that exists in any way prior to the inventor's filing date. So as you can see, as we go forward under the new patent law, the important standard for determining whether a piece of information counts as prior art is whether it's publicly accessible. And when courts look at whether a piece of information is publicly accessible, they're going to care about factors such as 
how long was the information displayed? How long was it available to the public? For the people that the information was made available to, how expert were they? How involved in the field were they? And therefore, how easily is, there, is it for them to look at the information and understand how to make or use your technology? Their courts are also going to look at what was the nature of the disclosure and is there any argument that there was an implied understanding that the information be kept confidential and not broadly disseminated to the public at large? It will be these factors that will determine whether your information is prior art that an examiner or court could use to determine that your later filed application is not new or is obvious in light of this earlier information. As always, it's important to err on the side of caution and that if you're making information available to others outside your company or outside your close network advisors, you really want to consider whether that disclosure could be deemed a public disclosure that could negatively impact your ability to later get a patent application granted.